Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to a rainy, dark, cloudy afternoon of Chem 170 Organic Chemistry with your host, me, Dr. White. Hopefully some organic chemistry will brighten your day. Now, as you know, Monday I wasn't here. I had uh, cataract surgery on this eye, which means if you look at my glasses, oh, no lens. Why? Because my doctor, Dr. Cabin, did a wonderful job. Uh, if you ever need an ophthalmist, uh, eye surgeon, Dr. Cabin is the person you should go to. He's located in Hoffman Estates uh, in the same complex he's at, which is part also of St. Alexis, which he isn't, I don't know if he's on his staff there or not, but he's a separate in the doctor's building. And they also have a separate building in the basement called the Hoffman Estates Surgical Center. And the nurses and everybody there were fantastic because until about two or three days before my uh, cataract surgery, I was going, ooh, 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 I'm just driving myself nuts. What if I can't see after a word? What if something I sneeze? I mean, one through every stupid thing, one through. That's a bad habit of mine sometimes. Until about three days before, I realized what I was doing myself, beating myself up over something that was really stupid because I had investigated online. You can do that, the surgeon, Dr. Cabin. And I also was recommend, he was recommended by someone who actually their family used him for cataract surgery. I'm quite happy. So everything went well. Uh, yesterday, you should have seen this was still somewhat dilated. It's back to normal. And uh, my vision is still not uh, super good. It's about where it was before, but I can see my hand now this far out clearly. If I go like this, I don't see it as clearly with this eye because it hasn't got the cataract surgery, which will be in about a week and a half. I'll get this eye, which I now feel much more relieved knowing what I went through. But if you ever need eye surgery, and I hope you don't, but if you do, cataract, you know, Dr. Cabin, if you want, always feel free to email me. All right. I hope you all watched the video. One of you told me already it worked for you. All right. Here's what we're going to do today. I'm going to go through test number three. And by the way, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys, did, you're doing great. I'm very proud of all of you. Think about it. You're learning organic chemistry. And before you took this class, how many of you heard horror stories, how bad it was? It's not. It's fun. All right. So what I'm going to do today is go through test number three. I'll do it a little quicker because I think everybody got about 90 on the test or close to it, which is quite good. And then if we have a little time, I'll go back and I'm going to go back and go cover some of the stuff from Monday's super long video that I made. And then we'll have our lab and you'll have the rest of the week off from Dr. White. By the way, if you're ever suffering from Dr. White withdrawal symptoms, you can always go to my YouTube video, which I know all of you did. All right. And again, I want to say this, I can't say enough. What a great eye surgeon I have. Actually, it was this eye. I'm still putting drops in it. And if it looks a little red because I put the drops in, I do it three times a day, one set. Actually, I have three different medications. One I do twice a day, one I do once a day, one I do three times a day. And they work. And that's organic chemistry too, because the medicine in there are all organic molecules. All right, what I'd like to do, and I'll be cutting this out of the video, questions. I need some water. Well, I don't know about you, but if I were in your shoes, I don't think I'd fit, but if I were, I would ask, what grade am I now getting in this class? By the way, I'm gonna be cutting out 
the answers from test three from the video. So I don't want it floating around YouTube for the rest of the <laughs> week, month, year, decade, whatever. All right, let's look how to find what grade are you getting? This is assume you've handed in all your labs, which you people are. There are two methods. Method A. Again, just assuming you've handed in all your labs, most of you have, you've done quite well. And this works well. X is equal to the sum of your three tests divided by three. And you're gonna get a number X. If X is greater than or equal to 90, you're getting an A. If it's 80 to 89, you're getting a B. And if it's 70 to 79, you're getting a C. Now, nobody is getting below this. Actually, I didn't even have to write this down. So anyways, now there's a method B. Let's look at why. Why is the sum of your two highest tests? You take that number and divide it by two. And this works X or Y. If Y is 90 or greater, you're getting an A, 80, 89, B, 70, 79, C. Why do I have a method B? Because if you look at my syllabus at the end of the year, I will drop the lowest test of your four test scores. And that's how I can do a method B, which I just did. And this is how you can, assuming you've handed in all the labs, determine what grade you're getting. By the way, you guys are doing pretty good. Thank you. Oh, it makes my heart feel good. It even makes my eye feel good. Actually, I should thank Dr. Cabin for doing that. All right, any questions about this? All right, since we went, you went through the video, I'm still gonna do some of that again, because this is a little more challenging, this chapter. How are we doing time-wise? We're doing good. Now, last time we met, and also was in the video, I talked about, and by the way, I'm in chapter 16, uh, the carbohydrates uh, and chapter five uh, lecture full uh, file on D2L talked about a chiral object and an achiral object. And a chiral object is an object that is not identical to its mirror image. Another way of saying that is it has a super non-superimposable mirror image. And what do we mean by that? And I don't have my models, but it's in the video. But if we look at our hands, and I'm going to give you a homework assignment. Yep, a homework assignment. Stand in front of a mirror and hold your right hand up. If you don't have a ring on, you'll see your left hand. Or if you do this, you would, again, you don't have a ring on, you'll see your left hand. By the way, I can't resist doing this. I think I did it already for you. Everybody know what this is? Spider doing push-ups on a mirror. <laughs> anyways, your hands are chiral because they're mirror images. And if I put my right hand and have my two index big fingers in the center, not index big, lined up, uh-oh, my thumbs are not lining up. If I get my thumbs lined up, none of the other fingers line up. If I do my index finger, what happened to the rest of these? So your hands are chiral. 
non-superimposable mirror image. Now, guess what? If you stand in front of a mirror with your foot, either one, your feet are non-superimposable mirror image. And no, I'm not going to take my shoes and socks off and try and show you how my toes don't line up. You try it for yourself at home and you'll find out your feet are chiral. Now, one of the things, I don't know if I did in a video game, but how many of you remember Simon Says, that game you played when you were a little kid? Remember, Simon Says this, take a step forward, or you'd say, take a step forward. And if the Simon didn't say that, you're out. And we played that in first grade or whenever, and at summer camp I went to, it was fun. Well, it's time to play Dr. White Says. Dr. White says, touch your right cheek. Come on, everybody. Dr. White says, take your hand away from touching your right cheek. Now, I've got a question for you. Is your face chiral or achiral? Hmm, good question. And the answer is chiral. How did you know to touch your left cheek as opposed to your right cheek? Or right cheek as opposed to your left cheek? I just confused you. Let me do that again. So I'm looking at my image. If you touch your right cheek, how did you know that was a right cheek? Whenever you can assign right and left to something like your hands, that object or whatever you're talking about is chiral. I'll say that again. Whenever you can assign right or left to an object or whatever, then it's chiral. So if I ask you, my right winter glove, is it chiral or achiral? And the answer is immediately chiral, because it has the word right in it. If I say, is my left shoe chiral or achiral? Ta-da! Well, guess what? If you put them up to a mirror, you'll see the mirror image is your right shoe. But as soon as you assign left or right to something, it's chiral. Now, I should warn you, danger, danger, I'm going to do some artwork. You can laugh your head off, but please don't break any ribs laughing so hard. Uh, my mother was a very good amateur artist. Not one I owe to her talent ever rubbed off on me at all. I'm a good organic chemist, real good, but not an artist. All right. And let's look at the following. Is a sewing needle, you know, the hand kind, not for a sewing machine, but I guess you could use that too. Is that chiral or achiral? Well, what is chiral? Something that has a non-superimposable mirror image. What is achiral? Achiral, which if we go back to the, means something that has a superimposable mirror image. It's identical to mirror room. A means without chirality. Remember, chiral means handedness in Greek, which I had two Greek students a couple of years ago, 170, and they confirmed that was true because Dr. White doesn't speak Greek, except I do like my gyro sandwiches. 
I wonder if that's more American than Greek. Well, whatever. All right, let's go back. How do you know? Well, look out, it's art time. <laughs> oh, this is one of my worst ones ever. Here you have a sewing needle. Now, if I put a mirror in there, and I'll use a dotted line, here's the mirror image. If I pick this up, it will be superimposable on it. So if something has a superimposable mirror image, it's Cairo. Oh, I hope I didn't injure anybody laughing your head off. Please don't break a rip laughing. All right, let's try another one. What if they had a piece of rice? Is that chiral or a chiral? I'll give you some time. You think about it. I'm going to drink some water. Let me know. Uh, time's up. Let's take a look. Well, if you have some piece of white rice, cooked or uncooked, it looks like this. And if I do the mirror image, it'll look like that. And this would be superimposable on that. Now let's try another one. Is your left shoe chiral or a chiral? I'll give you 10 seconds. Time's up. Good news, I don't have to draw it. As soon as I see the word left or right in the name of something, I know it is chiral. And why don't we try this one? There's a four door, you could also have done two door, but since I have a four door Explorer, if you have a four door car, is that chiral or a chiral? Remember, chiral means superimposable mirror image. A uh, chiral means non superimposable mirror image. A chiral superimposable mirror image. Remember tonight I have office hours. If you have any questions about anything, stop by. It's on Zoom and you don't even have to get in your car to, to come to my office hour. Such a deal. All right, let's take a look at this. Anybody need more time? Thumbs up people, are you done? Thank you. All right, I'm gonna have to warn you. Do not injure yourself laughing now. All right, let's do a car. It's got four wheels. It's got one, two sets of doors. It's got headlights. It's got a tailpipe. I'm not gonna put the brake lights in. And it's got a steering wheel. Now, if I put... <laughs> oh, that's one of my better ones. <laughs> you can tell I have no art talent whatsoever. Now the mirror image, whatever you see closest to the mirror, you'll see reflected first in the mirror. So here I'll see my tire, my door, my door, my tire. And then here I have my headlight. I'll have my steering wheel of my other headlight 
over here, I'll have my door and wheel, another wheel, door. And notice right here, the tailpipe is farthest away, so the tailpipe will be here. Now, if you pick it up and put one over the other, it won't be superimposable. You can see that here the steering wheel is on this side, here it's on the opposite side. We well, can say, what if I turn it upside down? Then in the first one, the wheels will be pointing down, and the second one, the wheels will be pointing up. So these are non-superimposable mirror image, therefore they're chiral. And if we were standing here, oh no, that's a better one of my stick figures. And I said, get into the right side of the car, you would know. Well, how do you know? Because a chiral has a right and left side because it's chiral. Now, do I have a minute or two? I do. And I would ask or remind me of a story uh, when I worked for, it was AXO. So I used to go to Littleboro and I had to fly in through London and I would stay in Manchester, that's in England. And twice I almost got killed crossing the street. Why? Because in England, the cars drive on the opposite side. So in the United States, if you're getting off a curb, you'll look where? To the right, to the left first, because that's where the cars are coming first. Well, in England, it's the opposite way. And both times, thank God, he smiled upon me, God. There was a Bobby, a cop, policeman nearby grabbed me real quick and both sir look at the ground it says look the opposite way if you're from america or something like that and i thanked them and i finally i have to tell you this is it works but how did i stay alive in england crossing streets i'd find somebody who was going to cross and when they stepped out and didn't get slammed i knew which way to look and I'd usually look for a little old lady or man. And when they'd step out, I'd say, oh, it must be safe. And I could see them going like this. And it worked. Now, let's do one more. Now, I don't have, I've got sweatpants on. Don't look. But if I had a pair of regular pants with pockets, uh, a button in the front, and a zipper, is that pants chiral or achiral? And the answer is chiral. Think about it. If you have a pair of pants that have, or slacks, whatever you'd like to call them, that have a zipper in the front and button and pockets in the front and back, it has a left leg and a right leg, pant leg. If you put your left leg in the right pant leg of those pants and the left and the right side and vice versa, guess what? The pockets would be in the front and the zipper and the button would be in back and it wouldn't fit right. And I, when we're doing this face to face and if I'm wearing a pair of pants like that, I tell my class, if you ever see me walking to class with my pants on backwards, please call for help. I'll need it. Luckily, that's never happened. Hopefully it never will. So think about it. A lot of, oh, let's do one more. How many of you are familiar with tube socks? And I'm gonna talk about the tube socks that are for mainly men. You know how some for women, I don't know, I don't think men buy these. They have the toes on the tube socks. These are tube socks that are plain white, no writing, no tubes, uh, no toes, no tubes, no toes. I can spell it right. Let's try that again. I was thinking white socks, <laughs> the team, not the things you put on your feet. Is this chiral 
or a chiral. And give me a thumbs up if you're done. Thank you. All right, it's time to blow your mind once again with my artwork. If you have a tube sock, which I'm wearing a pair now, it looks like this. There's no bump here at the top. And if we have the mirror image, my mirror image, it looks like this. And if I were to take this and rotate it, it would be superimposable, which tells you it's a chiral. Now, the other way you know it's a chiral, these type of socks, is there one that only fits on my right foot and the other fits on the left? And the answer is no, you can't, you can put it on either foot. And therefore that's it. All right, you can do one more. All right, if you had a mitten and had no leather palm or leather on the front or the south on the back, is that chiral or a chiral? And give me a thumbs up when you're done. Thank you. And the answer is, well, let's find out. And I have to do this one. <laughs> Can you tell I'm never going to ever, ever go to art school? Please don't hurt yourself laughing too hard. And the mirror image looks like this. They're supposed to be mirror images, just pretend it is. And they're superimposable. And therefore, this is a chiral. I hope you got a good smile out of this. I did. And if you think about it, you have a pair of mittens with no leather palms. You can put it on either hand. And that's because it's a chiral. If I look at the clock, oh, it's time for a break. Let's take a five minute break, come back at 1.56 and we'll do our lab. I'll see you in five.
Uh oh, I'm running late. Give me a second to do one thing. Actually, a couple things. And I've got to close some stuff. And open some stuff. Be with you shortly. All right, it's lab time. And this is a fun lab for me to watch. And what is this lab about? It's the rule of thumb. Oh, wait, it's on that thumb today. And that's like dissolves like. And let's look at today's lab. Now, as I taught you earlier, and you should know, in chemistry, there's an important rule called rule of thumb named like dissolves like. By the way, the name rule of thumb means it's true most of the time, but not 100% of the time. Something that's true 100% of the time in science, at least in chemistry, is called the law. Like the ideal gas law is always true, but like dissolves like, about 95, 99% of the time is true, but there are some exceptions. And it describes polar substances are soluble in other polar substances, and nonpolar substances are soluble in nonpolar substances. If you mix polar and nonpolar together, they're not soluble. And that's why we mean light dissolves light. Example of non-soluble or not soluble because the light dissolves light, they're not the same, if you take and make an oil vinaigrette dressing. Now, it reminds me, my mother liked to buy it. She didn't like to make it. Uh, back then, we didn't have food processors. With a food processor, it's real easy to make. But oil vinaigrette dressing, and her favorite was the wishbone Italian. And that's essentially vinegar and vegetable oil with some seasonings. Now, vinegar is water, which is polar. Vegetable oil is nonpolar. And if you shake it up, you can put it on your salad. But if you put the bottle down and look at it a couple of minutes later, you'll see whoop, two separate layers because light dissolves light. Now, one of the nice things about this lab and the other labs are I'm going to come off video, talk, look at you, or off the printed sharing. Am I lying to you? I could be. Maybe that stuff like dissolves like is something I made up. I didn't, but maybe I did. How do you know? In chemistry, we go in the lab, in organic chemistry specific, especially, we go in the lab and prove things. And if you have an idea, well, how about like dissolves like? Is it true? Well, let's go in the lab and find out. And that's what today's lab would be if we were face to face. But I gave you the data, but I'll talk about it. And that is you dissolve or trying to mix two things together to see if it dissolves. Now, what's the most polar substance on our planet or our universe? Water. And this lab you'll be using water, which is polar, and hexane, which is like gasoline, is nonpolar. Now, in this lab, you'll determine if various substances, such as uh, products that you, items you use in your daily life, are polar or nonpolar. How do you do this? 
this will be accomplished by determining if these substances or products you use in your daily life are soluble in water and are they soluble in hexane. And if a substance is soluble in water, well then, because the light dissolves light, if that's true, it's polar. And if a substance is soluble in hexane, then it's nonpolar. And finally, you'll determine a certain pairs of things based on your knowledge of light dissolve light, create a homogeneous mixture. By the word, by the way, if you're not familiar, I dot e dot, I forgot what that means in Latin, the actual Latin, but it's shorthand for that is are soluble in each other. Now, if we're in a lab, I'd warn you flex hexane is flammable put all waste in the waste container, I'll have out, and never in an organic lab do you light a match or lighters, you don't mind. Now in part one, you use water and test the solubility of various things in water. What you'll do in a small test, you'll put in a little bit of DI water, DI means deionized, there are no ions in it, the water that comes from your tap, which if you're in the chemical industry, we call city water, has a lot of ions like calcium. And you'll add a small amount of either liquid or solid to be tested. You'll mix it. I put out vibro mixers, but if you didn't have a vibro mixer, who is, I don't have a test tube handy. Pretend this is a test tube, it's glue stick, but test tube, open end, close end. Never ever mix a test tube like this. You can get chemical on yourself and also other people like the instructor, not good. What you do is if you don't have a viral mixer, hold the test tube firmly, take two fingers, one, two, three, four. Do it real hard, don't tickle it, and that will mix it. If we had the viral mixers, which most students use, you push down and it vibrates, like this super, super fast. And it mixes it up in about three seconds. And what you do after that is you check to see if it forms a homogeneous solution or not. And you let it sit for a while to see if it separates. Is it one layer, the same throughout, or two layers? And you rec record that in table one. Well, since I'm not gonna ask you to do this in your home, I've done it for you. And if you notice acetone is soluble in water, baby oil is not, ethanol is, and so on. Now, one thing, because it's impossible to clean out of a test tube, first time I taught this lab, I found out and so did my students, I tell everybody when you test Vaseline, do that in a beaker because it's easier to clean out than a test tube. Years ago, I used to have on the list car wax, and that's almost impossible to get off class in this lab. And therefore, the lab manager asked me, can we not use that? Because we're <laughs> replacing a lot of test tubes, even beakers. I said, sure, and I dropped it from it. Now, part one, you determine that things were soluble in water. In part two, we're gonna use hexane. You'll do the same thing, put a small amount, one or two milliliters of hexane, dry test tubes, and then add a small amount of liquid or small amount of solid to test with the hexane. You'll mix it. Remember, don't shake with your thumb on or you can use the vibro mixer. And then you'll let it sit for a little while, <clears throat> about two minutes, and then look and see, do you have a homogeneous, the same throughout the test tube solution, or do you see two layers? It's non-homogeneous. And you'll record that in table two. And here I've done this. And if we go down, you'll see vegetable oil is soluble in hexane. So is Vaseline. And then there's a fun part three. And here, test for solubility of key pairs. 
And now if we look at this, you'll do the same thing, put each item in there, mix it, and check and see if it's homogeneous or not. And what items do I have you do? Baby oil and vegetable oil, baby oil and starch, vegetable oil and starch, vegetable oil and Vaseline, and ethanol and vanilla, and ethanol, vanilla, and then add DI water. Now, why do I have the last one? Well, look at a label of vanilla, vanilla extract. And you'll see it has vanilla, water, and ethanol. I'm not going to tell you if it's homogeneous or not. I don't want to give it away. Oh, it's right here. I did. Oops. But anyways, that would have been today's lab, but I give you the data. But now you have to consider the data and answer the following questions. Now, let me remind you about number four. If you get grease uh, on your hands and you don't have any soap, what substance that you tested in today's lab would you rem remove the grease, use to remove the grease from your hands? By the way, this question is, you want your hands to be clean and not yucky. So consider that. Oh, is that a science word, scientific word, yucky? <laughs> well, it is. I'm a scientist because I just used it. And that's today's lab with these questions. And with that, I'm done. My eye works. I'm healthy. Thank you, Dr. Cabin. That's my eye surgeon. I don't know. He, I told him about yesterday. I went and I said, my other class, I thanked him, talked about him, and I do it today. He said, oh, really? I said, yeah, you're going to be a YouTube star, and you laugh. And he said, I'll have to look at the video. You'll have to send me a link, and I will. But with that, I'm doing good. See? I can see. I can either see the, read the stuff from here on the screen. With this eye, I can't see anything on the screen, like your names or anything like I can see with my glass on. That's why I only have one lens. With that, I'm done for today. Uh, we're done for the week. I'll get this video later on today, probably tomorrow sometime. If you have any questions, please come to my office hours. And with that, I'm going to say, gang is on. Goodbye. And I'll see you on Monday. Bye now.